In this chapter, we're going to focus on understanding various ways we can inject dependencies into an object. More specifically, we're going to talk about constructor and setter injection. In order to better illustrate what is constructor and setter injection, let us think about the following scenario. Say that you are a startup and you have a mobile application which basically is a music subscription application where a customer would pay a certain amount in order to listen to music for a period of time. Now since you're a startup, a lot of customers are not trusting you because you're asking them to enter some sensitive data like credit card information. So you thought of investing some money into some additional servers and storage networks in order to store their data in secure manner. But still, you neither have money nor the customer trust. Customers still don't trust you because you're not a reputed company. So what you're going to do is instead of storing their data on your own servers, you're going to take help from a third party company which is trusted by your customers. So that you can claim to your customers that you're not storing their data in your own servers but rather you're storing in a server that they trust. But you can't simply access this service from your code. Instead, you'd have to use their API. The trusted company would publish an API which is nothing but bunch of interfaces with some standard method signatures and then there will be multiple providers who would implement that interface and provide implementation. Each of these implementation would differ in terms of performance and the way they connect to the trusted company servers. And your company is actually going to use one of these implementations from your application logic and then you would be able to successfully connect to the trusted company servers. So now we're going to take a look at where the constructor injection would come into picture in this entire scenario. But of course, we're not really going to connect to any servers. We're going to have a very simple application that will illustrate this scenario. But the main purpose is of course to understand what is constructor injection and dependency injection in real time scenario. So try to keep this image in your mind while I walk you through the code in our next video. Alright, see you soon. Ok, let us have a code walkthrough of the following scenario. First of all, the trusted company will have to publish their API so that somebody can provide implementation for it. Let us assume that this is their project where they would design their API. For the sake of simplicity, we just have one single interface in here and that would just define set of standard methods that will help their clients connect to their servers and store data in secure manner. So this would have methods like configure servers which would let their clients connect to their servers and this method is going to accept the following parameters like account ID which would be the unique account ID given to a customer, their username, password and then the list of servers to which they want to connect to and list of config parameters which would let the customer provide the amount of cores required, the amount of hard disk, the amount of RAM etc. And rest of the methods are pretty self explanatory And once they define the API like this, all they're going to do is to publish a jar archive of this project. And in this example, all I've done is I've right clicked on this project and then clicked on export, search for jar, select this option jar file, click next and then you can choose the path where you want to store that jar file. Give it some name. In my case, the name that I've given is trustedcompany.jar. And once you do that, click finish, that would save the file. This is like the trusted company has published their API so that the people who implement will now start providing the implementation for their API. So now one of these implementers will have a project that looks something like this. Let me open this project. And inside their project, they're going to use that external API from the trusted company. So I go to the properties, Java build path, choose libraries, choose the class path, click on add external jars, and then you would add this jar file trusted company, which is basically having one single interface in our case. 
I've already done that and so you're able to see it in here. I don't have to do it again. Once you do that, you can actually create a class that implements that interface and that's exactly what I've done in here. And when you implement that interface, you're forced to provide the implementations for all its methods. And I just kept things simple with a sysout statement, just as you see in here. Pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. But the key thing to note here is when I'm trying to create an instance of SecuStore implementation, I'm expecting somebody to set the state of this object with a constructor. And the constructor is actually going to accept the same amount of parameters that are defined inside this method. So that at later point of time, when we're trying to call this method connect, it's actually going to call this method configure servers, which is actually going to make use of all this set of fields that we set. Pretty straightforward. Now once the implementer provide the implementation, they're going to publish their jar file so that somebody can use it. Again, in our example, I've just simply exported the jar file and with the name API implementer dot jar. And once they publish the jar file, it is we who have to use their implementation to be able to access their servers. So inside our project, all I've done is if you go to manage app data file, I have declared that interface secure store access which belong to the trusted company. That means prior to this, I've actually imported those external libraries. So I go to properties, libraries, and if you notice, I now have added these two libraries. One is the API and the other is the implementation of that API. It's as simple as that. The reason why I had used an interface in here is tomorrow at later point of time, if I would like to switch to alternate to implementation, I can easily switch without much of a trouble. And you'll understand why in a while. And rest of the methods are pretty straightforward. All I'm trying to do is to make use of the methods that are defined in this object. Pretty straightforward. So imagine that we're trying to really connect to the server and trying to store the data in a secure manner or whatever. Now let us go to the XML config file and see what is happening there. So if you notice, the constructor of this class is accepting a parameter of type secure store access, which is an interface. So we have to create a bean that we're going to inject to this constructor. And here is where we defined that bean. But if you notice, this class doesn't belong to the current project, but to an external library that we have just imported. So as long as the class is available in the class path, Spring can find it. And if you remember that the implementation class is having a constructor with these parameters, and so we are passing the same. But do take a note that so far we are able to inject an object, but here you can see that we are also able to inject primitive data types, just as you see in here. Here we are trying to inject the integer in the following format and a couple of string arguments, which will be the username and the password. But do make sure that you include the following attribute, the type. If you don't define the type, this may lead to ambiguity. We're going to talk about ambiguity in coming videos. And similarly, we can also inject collection types. Here we're trying to pass the collection list. All you have to do is to define the list tag and its values. It's as simple as that. Same as with the map, you just have to define the tag map and then you would introduce the key value pairs. And all these parameters would be injected to this bean when an instance of it 
will be created by the spring and after that instance is created we're trying to inject that object into our application and to this constructor it's as simple as that let's take a look at our main method which will be the myapp.java this is pretty straightforward all I'm trying to do here is to acquire this particular bean from the application context and then I'm trying to use its methods pretty straightforward let me run the program and see the result it worked now a little assignment to you pause the video and try to do the same thing with Java config it's pretty easy to do and I'd like you to give it a try alright I hope that you tried and you're successful in case if you didn't then here's the solution so let's go inside the Java config file and see what's inside it it's pretty straightforward all I've done here is created all those parameters and then passed it to the secure store implementation constructor and I'm returning the same and in here we have defined the other bean just as we did in case of XML and I'm trying to call this method so this essentially would pass the secure store implementation to the constructor of manage app data pretty straightforward let's run the program and see how it goes and it worked well so where is the constructor injection in here whatever we're trying to do in here is nothing but we're trying to inject parameters into a constructor it's as simple as that but the purpose of this entire example is just not to explain about the constructor injection but there are a lot of takeaways from this example we're going to talk about all that in coming video all right i'll see you soon so here is the first takeaway from our example nowhere in our application logic are we concerned about how to connect to the server to transfer the data or to retrieve we're just simply going to say connect and everything will be taken care by another entity or another bean and in fact nowhere in our class are we mentioning the connection parameters like we didn't mention to which server do we want to connect to using which account do we want to connect to what are the config parameters etc it would all be injected by the spring using constructor injection just as you see in here and in fact we're not bound to one specific implementation or in other words this class is not tightly coupled to any specific implementation we have the flexibility to switch to other alternative implementations without having to change a single line of code in our logic because whatever the implementation that we would like to use we can just simply inject it using spring okay another takeaway is you may be having a question as to why do we need a non-parameterized constructor when you have already defined a constructor well the answer is pretty simple it's always a good practice to have an empty constructor just so that you can create an instance without having to pass parameters I mean there could be certain methods in this class which has nothing to do with the secure store access then why would you want to take effort to create the secure store access and pass it as an argument instead if you have this default constructor without any parameters you can create a plain object and access those methods for example if you go to the java config you can't just create an object without having to pass an argument if there was no default constructor so you would see an error in here let's undo and also make sure whichever the constructor method that you're going to use for dependency injection make sure that it is set to public unless you have a good reason to change it to something else the reason is if you go to the config file we're trying to pass these arguments to a constructor of a class that belonged to another project if the constructor of it 
was not public, then we wouldn't be able to access that constructor. Also, I want to quickly point out that if you're not finding it user friendly to call a method within a constructor like so, you have an alternative way to deal with dependency injection when you're using Java config. And the approach is quite simple. All you have to do is to send a parameter that is of type whatever is the type that is being accepted by this constructor. It's as simple as that. And Spring is smart enough to understand that, that it has to inject the following bean. And everything will work as usual. Let's run the program and make sure things are working. And sure enough, it worked. All right, I'll see you soon. Okay, we have seen how to inject dependencies using constructor injection. In this video, we're going to talk about setter injection. Using setter injection over constructor injection will have a lot of benefits. But before we talk about the benefits, let us try to understand the setter injection. In order to incorporate setter injection mechanism, all you have to do is to get rid of this constructor from here and do take a note that we are in that implementation class and instead of using a constructor all we're going to do is to use a bunch of setter and getter methods to set all these fields. It's as simple as that. Now I don't have to type in all the methods. I can make use of the Eclipse feature. I click on generate getters and setters select all and generate that will do the trick once you do that save the file export it as a jar archive and then import it into your spring project and once you do that we need to make changes in our project accordingly and the changes that i've made doesn't go inside our application but rather on the config files so inside our config xml instead of saying constructor arg I'm going to use this tag property with these two attributes name would correspond to the field name and its corresponding value likewise everything else is self-explanatory and coming to java config it's nothing different all I've done here is I'm trying to create an instance of secure store implementation which is this line and then I'm just simply trying to set the properties it's as simple as that let's run the program see the result and then we'll talk about the differences between the constructor injection and the setter injection so this has worked well same would be the case with java config I had already tested it. So what are some of the good differences between the two? If you use setter injection, you have the flexibility to inject specific fields while ignoring others. Whereas if you're using constructor injection, while the creation of the object itself, you are forced to provide all the parameters. Otherwise things won't work. But at the same time, this may be a drawback as well because sometimes you may be required to inject all the fields you can't ignore even one of them in that case constructor injection may be useful in our example for instance we can't risk missing any of these parameters so it's better that we use constructor injection over setter injection in our case and another advantage with setter injection is that you can change the values of these properties at later point of time but it's not possible with constructor injection. Every time you want to change, you have to create a brand new object altogether. And you can't change just one field, but combination of all the fields. That may be a drawback at times. Or better yet, you can use combination of both. For example, we can still keep that constructor alive in here so that you have the flexibility to either go with constructor injection or setter injection. 
In that case, the values that you inject using setter injection will override the values that you had injected using constructor injection. Also, I want to bring up one important point in here is that even after introducing so many changes in the implementation class, none of our Java files were affected. The code remained as is, just as our previous example. There is no single line of code that is changed. All the changes, however, were inside our config files. Now that's the beauty of dependency injection. If we were using this secure store implementation directly in our class, we had to make changes in our code. We had to remove that constructor, make it a default constructor, unparameterized constructor, and then we have to set all the values inside our code. Just a very good point to note. Alright, I hope it makes sense. See you soon. In one of my previous videos, I was mentioning that it's important that you provide the type attribute for each and every constructor argument that you send. So that Spring will be aware as to what type of literal is this. Otherwise, if you don't provide the type, that may lead to ambiguity. So let us explore what is ambiguity. In here, we have a very simple class and it has a couple of constructors and they both are accepting same number of parameters. But in one constructor, we have string as the first argument. In the other constructor, we have integer as the first argument. From my config file, I didn't tell Spring what type of literal is this. So should the call go to this constructor or to this constructor? Well, Spring would be confused. Spring cannot determine whether this literal should be treated as a string or as integer. If it has to treat it as a string, call would go here, otherwise here. We won't have this ambiguity problem if there was only one constructor. Spring is smart enough to understand that there are three parameters in here and so the call has to go to the only constructor that is present in here. But when you have two constructors, that may cause ambiguity. So let me try to run the program and see the result. So here you notice that the account ID is set to zero, which is a default value. That means the call has gone to this constructor. But maybe I want the call to go here. How can I solve this problem? It's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is to introduce that type attribute and say what type of literal is this. I'm going to say it integer. Same goes with other tags as well, but this is going to be string and this will solve our problem and sure enough we have it populated and this is one of the reasons why I prefer to use Java configs over an XML config is because you're pretty well aware as to what type of data that you're passing as an argument so by looking at this code I can tell for sure that this is of type integer and the call is going to go to this constructor. Alright, that's about it. See you soon.